first rule of being the hotel inspector is never assume you've seen it all. What is this place? I thought I was coming to some gangbanging convention. Yeah. I'm Alex Polizzi and I'm an award-winning hotelier. Hello! But it's Britain's worst hotels that give me sleepless nights. There's a stench in here. I just check on the cesspit. This place just depresses me. I've seen the bizarre. I've got Lural envy. That's never happened to me before. The ridiculous. Why would you have a poo brown feature wall? And the downright ugly. Ah! This has to rank as one of the ugliest rooms I've ever seen. I've brought countless hotels back from the brink. Hoteliers think they know what to expect from me. But I'm coming more prepared than ever. This is my first attempt at covert ops. No, I've had enough. You've had enough. Are you Shush. have had enough. Stick up for your business, for God's sake. Clearly, what I need to do is maybe punch him once or twice in the face. You can't be told. Told what? Do you want to have an argument on no, the train? No, we've all finished all the rooms. Right. How do you work out what your occupancy is? I don't. I don't know how to do that. For God's sake. So struggling with this. This week, I'm amazed you've got the occupancy that you've even got. I'm in a land of confusion. It's all just a bit meh. We're not trying to be a hotel, will Well, you? I know, but then why aren't you saying what you are? With an owner in a muddle and a mess. What do you want from me? Oh, sorry. The panic is rising. I've arrived in familiar territory on the East Sussex coast, Eastbourne, a place that fills me with happiness and dread in equal measure. It's lovely to be in Eastbourne. I come here quite often because my parents have a house near here and it's a classic British seaside holiday place. However, it is quite a crowded market in terms of accommodation. There's a lot of bed and breakfast, a lot of hotels. It's quite hard to stand out from the crowd. Whenever I get a call from a seaside hotel, I know that they're going to complain about the same things. The season isn't long enough and that occupancy in winter is very, very low. And there, unfortunately, is no quick answer to this. If I could find one, I'd be a multimillionaire. It's a fact that Judith Brown was oblivious to five years ago when she decided to leave a career in childcare. Good morning, the Sheldon. And move her family south to take on the Sheldon. We should get confirmation email in a few minutes. All right. We moved here actually from Scotland and then we sort of went on a bit of a journey and decided we were going to buy a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and then this Eastbourne one came up and we thought, yeah, we'll have a look at that and go for it. We were thinking six to nine bedrooms, but this has got 20. It was a bit whimmy, but at the same time, in for a penny, in for a pound, let's do it. So we did. <laughs> the lift is not wanting to close. With husband Greg behind the scenes, Judith has taken on the responsibility of managing the Sheldon. So that brings it down to 106.78. We opened the door two days after getting the key and we hadn't really got a clue what we were doing, but we've both stayed in a lot of hotels, so we based it on that, really. Essentially, it was a blank canvas and we've just put the heart into it. Judith's colour scheme going from white to cream. So this is my favourite living room, just because it's really warmer and more cosier. And I think it works better, actually, with the artwork. But we have got original Haitian paintings all throughout. That's sort of our little flourish. And I think most travellers like it, and that's why they come back. So this is the luxury suite. I think it's a kind of love room, really, isn't it, if we're honest? We call it our most intimate room. Obviously, we'll try and sell flowers and rose petals on this one, because it's that kind of room. Year one of the business was busier than hopeful. I just need to take a card number off you to hold the room for you. Sometimes I'd even put the price up in the hope that people wouldn't book because we were too busy and we just wanted a little rest. But this year has been a harsh wake-up call. I think the last 12 months really have been a lot harder because it's very, you know, stiff competition. 
we've got a chain hotel over the road that we're doing £38. This winter is the first winter we've had to let the staff go and that was when we started thinking, gosh, this is bad, something's got to change here. We have no money. We, we literally were waiting for the next bit to come in and then we have to pay some more bills and then it's gone again. There is a tremendous amount of pressure particularly when there's no money coming in because you do feel very insecure all the time. A large hailstone can hurt you as much as a rock or a lump of lead if it's thrown hard enough. We've been at rock bottom, so I'm not sure that it could get as bad as this again, but I don't want it to ever be as bad as this again. And I think Alex, she's definitely the person that could help us with that. I'm already worried about this one. I'm not only up against a town that's trying to shed its reputation for pensioners, I'm dealing with a hotel that's struggling financially and has an awful lot of local competition. That doesn't leave me much room for manoeuvre. Everywhere I look, there's a hotel or a bed and breakfast. You've got to try and stand out from the crowd in a market like this. I mean, you wouldn't even know that this was a hotel. It's an okay location, but it's not an advantage that is restricted to only the Sheldon. I mean, I'm afraid it's a rather two level playing field, <laughs> but there's absolutely nothing that makes us stand out. With summer just around the corner, I don't have long to affect change here. So I'm getting straight to the point with Judith. Hi. Hi, Alex, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thank you, come round and join me. Um, what do you think would make someone come to you rather than one of the other hotels along this strip? We're different. We do only do bed and breakfast. We don't do evening meals, we're not licensed. And we have the car park, which the others don't. So apart from the car park, they're all kind of negative USPs. We don't have a bar. We don't have a restaurant. Uh I'd love to go up to my room. Do you want to take me? Yeah, certainly. Thank you very much. Are you all right in the lift? Yes. After you. Thank you. So far, so negative. Judith's selling pattern needs some work. So welcome to your room. Thank you. Gosh, it's lovely and light. So tell me, Judith, dear, did you buy this art? The art was actually here. OK, well then, um, you, you dodged a bullet there. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> well, yes, fine. And here we go again. Why are the towels on the bed? I think because people know they're clean if they're on the bed. Hmm. OK. OK, there we go. I shall leave you to settle in. All right, thank okay. you, darling. I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. <laughs> I find it odd that anyone would think that this kind of abstract rubbish is going to particularly enhances the room in any way. However, each to their own. I have never really understood this. The first thing I do when I get check into a room is go and have a pee and then want to wash my hands. They don't have a towel where you need it. Anyway, somehow this has yet to trickle through the general hospitality population. I must try harder. Otherwise, honestly, this is a really pleasant room. Masses of light. You know, things don't look too bad. Not entirely sure about the airplane logo. I mean, I know that we're within an hour of Gatwick, but then so are quite a lot of places. It says food and drinks. You're welcome to bring your own food and drinks into your room. That is a definite advantage, I would suggest. Um, and I don't think she's making enough of it. Opening windows. <laughs> Gosh, it's a long time since I've had to be excited about that. My alarm bells have just begun to ring. You know, these days, more and more, marketing is absolutely key. Now, I'm not a marketing expert, but I probably have more marketing expertise in my little toe than she does in her whole body. <laughs> I need to discover what makes the Sheldon different from all the others. This room is still decorated in a palette of beige and brown. Which is proving easier said than done. Nothing is awful and nothing's amazing. It's all just a bit meh. So the panic is rising.
I'm at the Sheldon in Eastbourne, a town teeming with guest accommodation where competition is fierce. If you've got five hotels in front of you and they're offering more or less the same levels of service, how on earth do you decide which one you're going to book? You're much more likely to get someone's business if you do something to stand out from the crowd and you make sure that you do it well. But I'm struggling to find anything unique in owner Judith's offering. There's no bar or restaurant here, but one thing the Sheldon does seem to have is plenty of space. Again, perfectly nice room, but I can't imagine it's very utilised. Somehow how it's laid out looks as if it's just a waiting room. It's a shame. It's just completely soulless. Who knows what she's thinking? She might think we're complete idiots. <laughs> I don't know. So we're just waiting for the, the slap down and bringing me back up. Honestly, I would rather go and sit in a cafe with my children than sit in here. It's just a miserable room. Basically, there's a complete lack of identity here. I mean, they've got to decide what they want to be. This is one of the family rooms, and actually, I can see how it would work. So there's a separate entrance here, which is quite nice, apart from the fact that it clearly hasn't been swept for a while. But if you're a parent and you need to put in a push chair, it's rather nice. It's another plus point for the hotel, and currently I'm struggling to find many. So I'm going to take the little bit that I'm given. I just wonder what Judith's vision for the Sheldon was when she took it on. So I've got to ask you, how did you think that you could add value? How did you think you were going to turn this thing around? make some money. Essentially, it has just been a case of making the rooms warmer. Because a lot of them were, they just had a coldness about them. So we've really just put a more creamy shade. I mean, I'm really struggling with this hotel. I find the rooms incredibly bland. And in a way, that's an advantage because they're inoffensive. But as a result, I can't really understand why anyone would book to come here. I'm amazed you've got the occupancy that you've even got. You know, you want people to have something that they remember about a stay. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much choice here and there's so much marketing going on and people are so competitive in this environment. What do you want from me? We really need a winterproof plan. What else can we do, really? I, I need ideas. I've, I'm out. I mean, honestly, Judith seems incredibly resilient. I was very straightforward with her about how I see this and how difficult it is for me to try and find a solution for her. Oh, that's perfect. You haven't booked breakfast. Are you wanting breakfast? Uh, no, thanks. And obviously, you know, she needs to make some money over the summer. Otherwise, next winter, she's already complained about this winter, next winter's going to be even worse. After five years, Judith still has no idea of what she's trying to be so it's time to take matters into my own hands. I'm beginning to build up a picture of where her market could lie. I just need proof. Hi, I need someone to road test a room for me. What's interesting is that Judith has no idea who her natural market is. Yeah, I need a family. So, you've got two kids? I'm going to have to round up some troops so that I can test out the beginnings of my theory. Yes, it's for the Sheldon Hotel in Eastbourne, just for one night. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll see you later then. I have a plan for my secret guests, and it starts here, somewhere I take my own kids when I'm in town. It's always good to draw on some local knowledge too. Hi. Hi. Good to meet you. Your guests are waiting for Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. But before I go to them, I wanted to ask you something. You open all year here? We are. Do you think that it's becoming a bit less old people and a few more younger families? Younger families are coming to Eastbourne, which is really nice to so see. So the demographic is slowly, slowly it shifting? It's slowly changing. Good years so far. It's uh, okay. fantastic. OK, grazie. Prego. OK, I'll go and see my guests. Thank you all so much. So I need your help. I just want you to be my focus group, to say this is what works, this is what doesn't. And then, tomorrow morning we'll reconvene. You can download all that on me. 
and hopefully that will help me in what direction I take the hotel. So go, just treat this as an ordinary booking okay. until I debrief you in the morning. <laughs> and until then we'll do secret squirrel, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I've deliberately hand-picked my secret guests to be at different stages of life to make this a worthwhile exercise both for me and Judith. What time do you have to be out by tomorrow? Half past ten is the job. Ten thirty. With three sets of guests with different demands booked in tonight, I want to see just who the Sheldon should actually be pitching themselves to. My research into Eastbourne tells me that the visitor demographic is changing. Don't yeah. any we don't do any evening meals here, but okay. if you go to the end of the road, okay. they'll give you 10% off on production of that. Thank you. Can we get a drink later in the evening or is that to... We don't have a bar here. Okay. So your breakfast is 8 to 9.30, but do bring them with you. With more families coming to stay, there are very few hotels in town that can call themselves truly family friendly. I'm hoping that the Sheldon may be able to corner the market. But if my plan pays off, we have a lot of work to do here. Top picks tried and tested by our family. It's quite a good idea, actually, suggesting to families what they can do. It's just the execution is really shoddy. You know, this looks like a family pin board, which is fine in a family home, but not in this environment. I'm still really nervous about what I'm going to do here. I felt quite enthused at one point, and then I kind of came back here and the reality hit me again of just how bloody brown it is. The next morning, Judith appears oblivious to the fact that her guests are, in fact, my guests. Would you like me to cook breakfast? Yes. yes. Would you like me? I have full English, please. Yep. I slept really well. I'm most of all concerned about the family. I hope they're all right. Eggie. Eggie. Morning, Alex. Morning. I thought we'd start off this morning in here because there's a few things I want to talk to you about. Absolutely. Is that all right? After you. Thanks. Time to fess up. So here are my guests. My planted <laughs> guests. <laughs> Did you have any suspicion that they were my guests? Not at all. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this sneaky stuff is right up my street. Do you want to come and sit in the dining room with us? Yeah, sure. And then we'll get some feedback? Yeah. All right, great. Come on, then. Bye -bye. Judith took that remarkably well. <laughs> I'll be interested to hear with how she responds to some of the detail of what they're saying, though. I mean, at some point, I've got to crack this varnished exterior. <sighs> Haven't yet. <laughs> First the table, guests belonging to the classic age bracket for Eastbourne. Thank you for helping me last night. How did you find your stay? Uh, right room. Yeah, thank you. Enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Room it was lovely. Lovely room. I think it was a shame not to have anywhere that you could sit and have a drink. In fact, there's nothing in the front there to attract you in or bring you back in until no. you go to bed. The couches were there, and obviously the window seat is that takes up a whole wall. So you've and then you've got that awful door bit. I'm sure I can still make it look better than you have. Go for it, Alex, please. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your room price then? Eighty-nine pounds. Did you think that was good value for money? Mm, no. Not what's available. No. 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 Um, only because, obviously, again, there was no bar to come back to. Um, and just felt all we were paying for was the room and the breakfast. Um, I still thought it was more of a hotel. And on, um, on the booking website, did it refer to it as a hotel or as a B&B? &B? No. Every website, it's just the shelter. Well, why, then? Because we're not trying to be a hotel. Well, we? I know, but then why aren't you saying what you are? The holy grail of hotel owners uh -huh. is to make sure that you don't overpromise and under-deliver. You make sure you deliver on their expectation, and that is much easier to do if you're telling people very clearly that you're a family-run B&B. Thank you for having us, and thank, uh, thank you, you so much. Really it's really yeah. good to hear you. Their reactions to things were things that I was thinking too. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. So, how was your night? Did you think that that was value for money? I didn't think so, to be honest. 
in all honesty. Why? For that sort of price, I think it could have been a little bit nicer, a little fridge or something. So if we did bring our own food and drinks, seeing as there isn't a bar, we could stick some drink in the fridge or some food and things like that. But there was no fridge. It was a bit of a letdown. You didn't sit in the sitting room? No. There's nothing really there, just seats yeah. and, you know. It's a good space, though. You could... I you know, we need to utilise yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Space. Thank you so much for coming and I hope you both have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm sure this isn't what Judith wants to be hearing, although I think there's value in their feedback. But now it all rests on our family. Will they see the potential here? Mommy. What did you think of it as value for money? Or is it back to the drawing board? Now we've got to try and work it out. Oh, that's oh, all right. <laughs>what did you think of it as value for money? How much were you quoted for your room? Um, it was our... 137. Seven, including breakfast, which we thought was which really good for a family good, of four, actually. I mean, would you have liked to see changing mat or um, potty yeah. or...? It's all available, so if you've forgotten yeah. it, you just ask. Just every... but maybe you should that say that, yeah, darling. You don't say yeah. that anymore. <laughs> Overall, was it a pleasant experience? Yes, it's very nice. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, we had a good stay. Good. I'm yes. glad. Relieved would be more accurate. Finally, some direction. But before we get started, I need to get Judith on board with the plan and the workload. So I think that feedback was really useful. I think it's time I gave you some of my feedback. Yeah. So if you walk this way. Okay. Yesterday, we had that lovely family with children staying there and they used that entrance and I can't bear the fact that that was what they saw. You can never get over that first impression. Yeah. And so this area needs to be cleaned up, yeah. you know, because what it does is it just feels a little bit, a little bit lax. Yeah. So can we go on? Yes, of This course. way? I want to roll out a plan to enhance Judith's current offering. I mean, I feel like this is an area that is seriously underutilised. I think this is an area that should scream family. Mm -hmm. You've kind of, in a way, done the minimum. You've got to think about ways to enhance the whole experience. Sure. And I think you're being too bland and too safe. OK. Nowhere is the minimum effort vibe more visible than in the, inverted commas, family sitting room. I mean, this room is like such a pig's ear. Yeah. It's a real afterthought. It kind of looks like a charity shop. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, talk about trying to polish up a turd. I think this room seriously needs to be tackled. And I honestly think that people respond so nicely to the fact that you've made an effort with their children. We need to think about how we can add value to the Sheldon with these two rooms to make sure that they have as nice a stay as they possibly can in Eastbourne for this amount of money. Sounds yeah? awesome. Does really that good. start? OK. Yeah. Good. Frankly, I'm surprised that she doesn't seem to have stamped some kind of personality on the place in the five years that she's been here. She says to me that the rooms are very bland. I mean, blander than this? How is that possible? 24 hours ago, I was wondering which way to turn, and I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like I've got quite a clear direction. With the peak summer months looming, I need Judith to give it her all. But just as I'm about to leave, it seems the pressure has become too much to bear. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> well, there's a lot to build on, and I think you should feel really positive. You know, we've got to try and work it out, and I'm sure that we're, we will. Um, you know, there's nothing awful here. I don't think there is, but it's, um, as I say, we just lost a bit of direction. Oh, I know, Donna, it's awful, but also it is a job. It's just, that's why I get so cross when people say I'm going into the hotel industry. I think, <laughs> you bastards, you've got no idea how hard it is. 
<laughs> I'm actually 15 and I look 45. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's brutal because there's no let up, is there? And especially when you're not making money, you want every bed to count, don't you? Definitely. It's the, the occupancy has just seemed to be going down and down. And then what they said, we've had to put the prices up and we're not good value for money anymore. So it's catch-22. I know. I know. We'll get it sorted, darling, don't worry. I know. OK? <laughs> I never look like I'm just a complete muppy right now, but I really appreciate it. OK, darling, good. Oh, it's all right. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> well, I mean, I cracked the facade. And I'm sorry that Judith cried. I'm sorry I upset her. But in a way, it's much more realistic. She didn't feel quite emotional. I think it was very strange. You know, I think we have quite a lot to work with here. And certainly, if she does her bit, we'll get a lot further, a lot faster. Then why did this fit before and it won't? <laughs> Tears dried and spirits buoyed, Judith soon puts her energies into strengthening the Sheldon's family-friendly concept. That's better. So Alex is busy. It's not something I'd like to repeat, but I took all the good stuff from it. I'm going to trim a wee bit more off this because I'm still not 100% happy with it. She's even brought out a bit of the creative side of me, which has been really good fun. I want her to cheer the place up with some colour. You know, we invited her to come and she had got some stuff to say and I've just took it on the chin. It was wrong and it needs fixed and that's it. What's the worst that could happen? Other things fall off, see? <laughs> and now I don't have the word sure anymore. That was what I was terrified of. My fears are bigger. It's June and the peak months of the summer season are just around the corner. It's vital that the Sheldon makes its new identity clear as a family-friendly B&B. What did you want the tab to be called, by the way? Well, let's call it Family Page for now. We can always change it. Judith has called on her son, Jordan, to update the website. Perfect place for a family or group. Uh, what else can we put? Might have to get a bit creative with this one. Yeah. Hmm, indeed. I think Judith is going to need backup, so I'm returning to reveal the next part of my plan. Well, this looks much better thought out than that old cork pin board. It looks like there's been a bit of thought and care taken over it. The fact that the sofa's half in front of it probably doesn't help matters terribly. The sofa is in position directly centred under the mirror, and then it won't be so annoying. Trust me. I know, I know about these things. <laughs> Perfect. See? Now you can actually approach and look at what is on the board, which is obviously a good start. You can read what it says, and your sense of proportion isn't constantly offended. Voila! <laughs> My job here is done. Not quite. Hi, Judith. Morning, Alex. How are you this morning? Very well. How good. are you? Yeah, really good. Yes? I like your wall downstairs. Thank you. You saw that then. That looks <laughs> much nicer. So you haven't been letting the grass grow under your feet? No, I'm exhausted. Are you? <laughs> Getting on with it. Can I see if you've done anything in the lounges? Yes, of course. Yeah? Well... It is nice to see in here that the first stage is completed and you've got rid of those gopping yep. sofas. The coaches have gone. Yay, well <laughs> done you. I mean, I've got big plans for this room. I've decided to take on the transformation of these two rooms. But before that can begin, we have more pressing problems to resolve. To say the Sheldon's branding is confused is an understatement. It's bothered me more than slightly, this, because it is kind of so anodyne. Honestly, I think the fact that it says radiators. I mean, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel when you need to advertise the fact that you have radiators in your rooms. This, I suppose, is meant to refer to the globe, which is very important because, of course, this hotel is of global significance. And then you have a luggage label. So the whole thing is, this isn't an airport hotel, unless I'm very much mistaken. I think it's time that Judith and I meet the professionals. 
The truth is, most businesses need branding. You can't ignore it. And although it is a very expensive element to upkeep for any business, it is really worthwhile. Effective branding really sticks in your mind, and she definitely needs it to stand out from this busy crowd. I've brought Judith to Brighton, where a team of experts have been looking at a new brand for the Sheldon that will hopefully get people engaged and booking. Over to you two. To establish a strong look for the external um, part of your building, we've wanted to have a look at your brand as a whole so that we can get a strong look and feel for you. The logo is the first thing you see, so it's what attracts the eye. It's kind of the glimpse into what guests can expect. We've got this particular focus on young families. You can feel a look coming together. Um, so we use that to help inform a colour palette for you. Mm -hmm. We've taken influence from nature, so you've got the greens that come from kind of the South Downs way. You've also got the natural chalky colours from the cliffs. The but cream. taking... <laughs> I think this is called chalk rather than beige. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get rid of that thing. <laughs> chalky white. <laughs> um, but taking strong accents from um, the lighthouse at Beachy Head. Um, so we've got this um, kind of pebble device that houses the logo. Um, so then we've uh, taken this logo and applied it to your, the front of your building so you can see oh, that's how that translates. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it's, it's stripped down slightly from the logo you've seen there just to give yeah. it more clarity when it's on the side. I love that. Isn't it smart? It really is. With the pebble, like that's dead me. I'm quite a curvy person, I guess. I like round things. I don't know. I just thought it was really me. They got me down to a T. What do you think of this so far? I love it. I really, I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> it makes you look much more professional, yeah. immediately. And I think with the, what well, we're calling it, chalk-coloured porter. It's not beige. Yes, it's okay. definitely chalk. OK. Yes, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thanks. It's been such a pleasure to work on. Good. Judith seems reinvigorated. So my plan is that for my final day with you, we will have new signage up. Please make sure that the front is immaculate, that the side passageway is immaculate. We're going to have a fantastic family playroom. Um, you'll have a nicer sitting room for grown-ups. But what is important is that we've done all this work at the beginning of the season, so hopefully we're in a much better place for when trade then starts to get a bit quieter, yeah, at the end of the summer. No, I think that, you know, with a little bit of luck and a lot of effort, the Sheldon is a great, you know, it's a budget alternative that is perfect for families. I mean, all the elements are there. She just needs, it's up to her now to pull it all together. Just 10 days later... We'll remove that one. That will be coming down and we've got a new one going straight up in exactly the same place. Brilliant. The old bland brand is a thing of the past. The side is the beginning, the middle and the end of our business. So <laughs> hopefully this is going to be totally awesome. Oh, well. I can do with the dust behind that. I mean, it looks stunning. I'm really chuffed. <laughs> Definitely the start of new stuffs and new beginnings and something really good. There's no time like the present to step things up a bit. I have a surprise up my sleeve for Judith. So, my bit is done now. And actually, she has to prove to me and to everyone else that she has what's needed to be a hotelier. Oh, <laughs> proper post. Dear Judith, I'm sending some guests to test your new facilities. This is your chance to show me that you're capable of adapting to your life as a hotelier. Over to you, Alex. Well, I hope Alex sees that we can actually pull this off and that we're going to actually make a really proper go of it and make it amazing for everybody. In just 24 hours, the Sheldon will be put to the Hi, test. So I've got no idea what Alex has sorted out for tomorrow. No doubt we'll find out with Alex, cos we normally do. Can Judith pull off a strong start to the summer season? I hope there'll be tears of happiness. Either tears of happiness from her or tears of frustration from me.
It's June and Eastbourne is about to enter the summer season. Today, I hope, marks a new beginning for one of its B&Bs, the Sheldon. Seaside towns across the UK are going through a period of upheaval. Eastbourne feels to me like a place which is on the up and it's somewhere that people consistently want to visit. Next time they do come, I want to make sure the Sheldon is a viable option on their list to stay. Rebranded with a clear new family-friendly identity, I'm sending some of the market's toughest critics along. I just hope Judith's ready. There isn't enough time to do everything that I want to do at the time when I want to do it. I don't know, because my bin's full. I had a bit of a, a nightmare one night. Somebody had like moved all the doors and Alex just kept appearing and I was trying to get away from her. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Judith, hoping that she's going to show me that she's pulled her finger out and has really laid it on for my special guests. I'm not really ready for today. Can we do that thing where you do, the bride's got to be later than the groom and drive around a bit, please? <laughs> it looks a lot better. The sign is very chic, very smart and actually stands out, which is really important on this street. And the fact that it's now saying very clearly that it's a bed and breakfast is, I think, helpful to Judith and to marketing her business. Hello. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi, really good to see you. How are you feeling about your new sign? I'm absolutely over the moon. I mean, I was speechless and you actually managed to shut me up, so well done, because oh, nobody's done that. <laughs> I think it looks great, darling. I'm longing to see inside. Did you get my postcard? I did. Do you know who any of my guests are going to be? I've got no idea, to be honest. OK. Unbeknownst to Judith, one of her VIPs actually checked in last night. Hi, Sean. Hi. So nice to see you. Hi, I am Sean. Hi, nice 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 to meet you. Baby friendly bolt holes. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing what you've got. Excellent. Do you want to lead the way, darling? Yeah, sure. Representing one of the most trusted family friendly accommodation websites here and internationally, Sean's verdict could be great news for Judith if she likes what she sees. When I first arrived, this dull corridor's only highlights were a bland sofa and a tacky looking pinboard. Now it's transformed into a family-friendly hub with a place for everything, from boots to buggies. So we've now got lots and lots of lovely things that they can borrow to take down to the beach with them. Brilliant. Uh, we've put together a family ball. I think that's a really lovely idea. And it's all things that have tried and tested by you and your family, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, it's an OK, so you can really recommend it. Yeah. Brilliant. Judith's family rooms had potential, but were crying out for an injection of colour and some thoughtful finishing touches, making it easy for parents to travel with tots. Lots of space for a cot. Absolutely. We can get two cots and that's a double sofa bed. Oh, fantastic. So, you know, it's quite versatile. Uh, we've got the lovely blackout curtains, good. so there's no yeah. issues with them. I was going to ask about that. That's 5 a.m. There's night light, baby bath, the baby monitor, changing map. And the baby monitors work for the lounge upstairs? They do. Excellent. Judith may think she's home and dry, with Sean seemingly approving. But she's about to meet an even tougher audience. Come on, my little darlings. And one of these mums, Gemma, stayed with her family to help me evaluate the Sheldon four weeks ago. We're almost there. Well, now I'm very anxious because I've got no idea. Hi, Judith. Well, hello. Hi. Hi there. Come in. Come on in. Judith, I've got some, some <laughs> children to test on our playroom for us. <laughs> Uh, you remember hello. Gemma, Judith? Yes, hello. hello. Shall we go to the playroom first? Yeah. This way, kids, please. When I first arrived here, my guests had no desire to spend time in the lounges. Now families can enjoy the best of both worlds, with a grown-up space to relax and a playroom to entertain smaller guests. I would like their bedroom. Yeah. yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Yeah, they're good, aren't they? 
What do you think of this as a playroom? Yeah, no, I think it's really nice. It's well equipped. There's more here than there was. Yes, there? a lot more. It's really well presented and uh, you'll be entertained for hours. Isn't it? The children all seem really happy, don't they? Yeah. So. And happy children usually mean happy grown ups. It seems like a lovely hotel and be somewhere I'd like to stay with my family. Lots of the hotels we stay in, no, they haven't really um, catered for children as well as this has, so yeah, definitely, I'd stay here. Finally, I think it's vital the local tourist board are aware of the Sheldon's new identity. So now I'm a wee bit nervous because I know somebody's coming, but I don't know Look who. Look who I've got! It's Annie! Hi, Annie! Hello, Judy. Now I know I'm, I can relax. <laughs> <laughs> With the lack of family rooms in Eastbourne, this should be exciting news for the tourist board. And when families do come, a few useful additions to the dining room should make them want to stay and relax. What we've added in, which I think is essential somewhere with no bar, is no a bar. fridge and a microwave so you can heat anything up. Oh, definitely, yes, absolutely. I mean, it's fantastic that guests can use that. Mm. I'd certainly be putting my white wine in there. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. Do you think this is good along the white lines? Oh, definitely. I mean, we, we know from our research that, uh, you know, for one of the barriers for families coming to Eastbourne was uh, the lack of appropriate family accommodation. So, you know, for me, this is fantastic. This is definitely what people have been saying they want. Great. What a turnaround of opinion in a matter of weeks. But there's still one important verdict outstanding. So, Sean, what did you think overall of the Sheldon and what Jude is trying to do here? Do you think it's suitable for families? Are you going to be able to... Yeah, I think that what you've started here is really good. I think the enthusiasm that you've got for it is also um, really positive. Um, it's definitely uh, something that we consider from the site now. I'm really pleased, Ole, that we've got your seal of approval. I really appreciate you coming to uh, help too. us Thank out. You. Thank you. And I think that gives us something to build on, doesn't it? Definitely. Good. Well done. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully, darling, you've got an idea now about what you need to do, and it's all pretty affordable. Yeah, which is really important for us at the moment. Hopefully we can do a little bit every week and try and get back on top of things. We've got a whole new plan now, a whole direction to actually go in, and I think we can nail it. So thank you so much for everything you've done, Alex. Oh, you've been amazing. pleasure. <laughs> Take Good. care. Good, thank you. Bye. I'm happy to be leaving the Sheldon in a much better state than I found it, I believe. It's got an identity, it's got a focus. I think Judith has been revived and refreshed and re-enthused. And hopefully we've left her in a good state to do this summer season. <laughs>